And we're live. Hello, Michael. Hello, Matt. How are you? I got, I'm doing all right. I got to say, I'm really having a sort of a Don Bluth kind of thing right now, because after seeing this movie, just fuck cats. <laughs> all of them. Just every single one. Well, I can think of some cats that would love it a little too much. Oh, my God. Please don't. <laughs> Milk! Anyway. <laughs> God damn it, Michael. <laughs> had to be done. Uh, yeah yeah i know i was thinking i remember watching this movie and i was thinking like oh god who is this obnoxious annoying fourth wall breaking pretentious know-it-all smug ass cat and everyone's like of course it's ricky gervais yeah yeah he was the only part of this movie i hated yeah that was case like oh Shut the fuck up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was saying the same thing. <laughs> like, just like every... Up your face. I can't I know. stand you in real life. I can't stand you here. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, it's like... I mean, here's the thing. I just have a general dislike for narrators in kids' movies. Just in general. Because, like, they feel like they have to have them to explain stuff that we can see that's happening. And it's like, don't tell me how to fucking feel right now. I'm feeling it. Piss yeah, off. Yeah, no, I get that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, it depends on how it's done. There's sometimes it can kind of work okay um, if it's done yeah. by someone who knows what they're doing, but if it's just a character that's so obsessed with their own cleverness that mm-hmm. they just don't know when to shut the fuck up. And if, again, of course it's Ricky Gervais. I know. <laughs> Played by a real life asshole cat. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I used to like Ricky Gervais until I started listening to more of what he actually had to say. <laughs> oh, me too. Yeah, he's just yeah. a huge asshole. Just kind of like watching him. Hades and going like, hey, they got a real life Satan to play Satan. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> uh, anyway. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, the rest of the movie is fine, I guess. Yeah. I don't it's, know. It's, it's pretty great, actually. You know, I, I loved it. Until the cat started talking again. But it's like, I feel like if, if they only removed Ricky Gervais's voice, like if the rest of the movie was completely the same, except that the cat never spoke, I would have been fine with that. Uh, like that. Then it would be a perfect movie for me. See, I don't know if I'd go with perfect for me, because I definitely Very have good an, odd, movie. an odd time kind of watching this. I don't think all the pieces really meshed all that well with me. What's the buzz? Uh, mostly because it's like it's very manic, and it can't it can't really pick a plot, and <laughs> it tends to jump mm. all over the place. Mm. Uh, very true. In terms of just where tone and substance, mm. um, and where it's going, like there's like six different plots in this that occur in this movie that I thought I was watching like a condensed miniseries. Uh, <laughs> For a good chunk of it, uh, like first it's about uh, these kids who have these really shitty, self-indulgent, par- uh, selfish parents, and then yeah. they decide- and then there's an orphan, and then they decide they're gonna hide the orphan from their parents, and the parents find out, and then they gotta find new place for the orphan, and then they and they get this baker, they like, find this weird baker who looks like Captain Crunch's like long lost cousin. Uh, Voiced by Terry Crews. Of course, there's Terry mm-hmm. Crews. Uh, uh, <laughs> and right. then. And then the, or the orphan gets dropped off, and then that plot line's done. And it goes back over to the house, and they say, we got we to kill our parents now. So they go mm-hmm. to the parents office. The parents go, we're going to get a nanny. And then the nanny comes in, and the nanny's like, I'm going to bond with all of you individually at some point, even though some of you are going to resist. And then it's like, okay, that plot line's done. Now we're going to sell the house. No, we're not going to sell the house. Now there's oh, this man. orphan squad that, looks, that comes in and takes the children away, and then they got to go save the kids. And then that still, movie's still not done because the parents are still alive, and they got to figure out, okay, well, now we got to save the parents, and then they do that, and then the parents go off and do other things, and then they and almost they die. And, just... and, and then they get saved. And it's like, dear God. Yeah, okay, fair enough. This movie does kind of go all over the place. <laughs> see, when you just say the things that happen... You kind of see it. Mm-hmm. Like, there are, like, it's, four it's like villains it. in this. Like, five climaxes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Honestly, it's just, like, like really, like, one of the big things I liked about it is there's a lot of energy to the movie, which, 
sometimes I will admit was to its detriment. Like I know yeah. that you're not supposed to like the parents, but I feel like there's a way to do obnoxious but still charming. But it didn't quite hit that balance. Um, I mean, yeah, I feel like the parents, the parents at least were kind of consistent. Oh, Whereas, they were very consistent. Yes, <laughs> and really fucking horny. Which is, oh my god, I know. <laughs> Like, this, the point where he got actively uncomfortable. Like, there's a sequence where, I guess, like, the wife loves to knit. And yeah. she's, like, takes, she knits his nose hairs that he inst- that she instigates out of him by, I guess, making him act like a dog. <laughs> Which is a scene that happens. And I'm like, fucking hell, this movie is kinky. And so I'm like, yeah, I, know. I, was just like <laughs> I don't even smoke. I feel like I need to smoke a cigarette after watching that. <laughs> God, this is sick. <laughs> Like, hey, if that's your thing, that's your thing. Don't get me wrong. I just don't know if I have to play it in a kid's movie. <laughs> what was a Twitter story I just read about? A woman who makes like six figures a month doing acting like a dog for somebody. So I was like, hey, apparently there's a market for it. <laughs> yeah, you know, if it works, it works, you know. Not going to kink shame. Uh, I'm not going to yeah, make this... somebody who makes six figures more than I do. So. All right. Just, it, it just turns out... Remember, kids, if you want to make lots of money, just appeal to a very particular niche fetish. Uh, <laughs> Mary Rich. <laughs> just... and, and learn how to apply that to the uber rich with a lot of disposable income, apparently Ooh. in a deep hole they'll never get out of. Uh, <laughs> anyway. anyway. Uh, yeah, like, this movie really kind of does feel like if Lemony Snicket mated with Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. <laughs> Tell me you don't uh, see it, though. <laughs> I mean, with I haven't seen Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs in a mo- while, but, like, that was also a very energetic movie, yes. It's, like, that energy mixed with, like, the tone and aesthetics of, like, a series of unfortunate events. Oh, yeah. Like, there are some, some parts of the movie that are just really... Like, I mean, first off, the premise is dark, where the kids are like, let's just send them to get killed. <laughs> It's like, oh, that, is, that is one part that did get a genuine laugh out of me. It was just yeah, I actually enjoyed that very much. Uh, and then like the end, like how, we need to orphan ourselves. How are you gonna do that? Like that chop. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, no! Like that chainsaw. Oh god, no! Between them, you idiot. I, don't know, I was kind of down, down for the murder part. I was <laughs> like, Ooh. I would. I would have actually been really curious as to how they would make that a kid's movie. Like, I know. I was like, all right. Now you like have a bunch of Home Alone antics that the parents keep narrowly dodging. But like speaking home of Home Alone, alone antics, yeah, that yeah. comes up in the movie. Just, <laughs> oh, man. Now it's, it's like Home Alone antics mixed with Adam's family. <laughs> oh, yes. Just, oh, my God. Um, so, yeah. The suite just kind of jumps all over the place. And I... I, I I'm having a hard time deciding if that works for me or not, because it does eventually all tie back together. Yeah. Uh, uh, but at the same time, it is such a windy road to get there. <laughs> mm. uh, I Personally, when I was watching it, I didn't have any issues with it, but when you say it out loud, yes, I do recognize it. Because like... there's like a lot of parts where it's like, okay, we're getting to the emotional core of the movie, and then I'll pause. It's like, we still have 30 fucking minutes? <laughs> <laughs> like that literally happened with the part where and I already explained the entire plot of the movie so I can just yeah. go around here uh, with the part yeah. where there's this, this orphan company I guess that just takes back orphans and looks it, like it's like a metaphor for child services I guess but yeah I know just shit all their child services and all their hard work I got a little annoyed yeah. at that that's, my, that's, my, that's, my, that's a personal mm. yeah uh, okay <laughs> and then you have like the all is lost moment where all the kids are separated and they're doing like the Oh, we all need to get back together and be a family thing, and then they yeah. even have a villain that shows up, and then they get like, okay, this is the this is the climax, right? This is the emotional core of the movie. No, you still have thirty minutes, an entirely different <laughs> plot line to get to. <laughs> I mean, what was it like? The way it read to me is that like, what was it? It was inspired off a book. It was off a book, yeah. Yeah, is or that series, I think I don't know, but see what I think they were going for was that they were trying to be as close to the book as possible, where like I not read the book. But... I mean, I haven't read the book either, but I, that was the impression I got because mm-hmm. it was paced like it had a lot of time to go through everything, and like 
like, you know, like it was paced like they had all these different characters that were spread out all over the place. And some of it is just kind of going to places like, oh, remember that place we were? Let's go back there again or something like that. Like, I don't know, something something about like the myriad of like very vibrant characters like made me think book. I like can see that. I mean, I know it's I know it's based off a book, so I'm sure yeah, it is, yeah. I'm borrow from it, but I don't know how close it is. Um, I wouldn't if you know, know let us know in the comments because again, Willoughby's is a book I will probably never read. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> it's probably I'm probably not in the age group it is. I'm getting close to my thirties. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. That that was like another thing is that like there are some parts where I'm just kind of like, okay, this was definitely intended for very young children. Like, yeah. you know, like a little here and there, but at the same time, they also had a lot of the adult humor in there where it's like the, uh, like specifically the murder. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. they, like, I feel like they would like tease like more adult jokes and then throw in like a, a kind of a throwaway kid joke in there. Like the part yeah. where they tease like the Tim, the oldest son, like almost gets run over by a bus and then it turns, then it turns out he doesn't, he just pees himself. It's like, oh, oh, it feels it... kind of like a lame yeah. off to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and there's a few jokes like that. It's not, it's not that prevalent. Yeah. Um, so it didn't really bother me all that much. It was kind of like, mm -hmm. oh, you could have done a better payoff than that. Mm hmm. Um, that's being on the more nitpicky side of things. Yeah. Um, one thing I really loved a lot is that it kind of pulled off this thing that a lot of kids' movies aren't able to do, where it's like to show, like, to really make you, like, what was it like uh purveying danger in a way like like showing danger i don't know i think it's something about like the animation the animation speed or something but like like the slapstick is just fucking genius in this movie like holy crap and like the there was like a scene where they literally did like a bunch of home alone traps for people trying to buy their house. And, yeah. And like oh, holy shit. I felt so bad for all of these people because it just looked so painful. And there was like a scene where the um fuck, I don't know what it is, but it has really good timing. Like, for a lot of its stunts and a lot of its movement. Like, there's really good timing behind it. Mm -hmm. And that really came out uh, in the end. Like, after they climbed the mountain, they were all like, oh, crap, we're all going to die. And I was like, okay, now the rescue's going to come. Yeah. Okay, now the rescue's going to come. The rescue is going to come now. Here it comes. And then it's, like, all black, and I'm just like, Oh, how fucked up would it be if they showed the credits right now? <laughs> no, but we, we and, did but get his picture face yeah. going like, hello, I'm still in this movie. Uh, Look at me all pretentious and shit. <sighs> like, <laughs> Look at me, my smug superior cloud of smugginess. I know they had the cat like walk out because he was talking, but even if the cat walked out without talking, I would have loved that a lot better. Just, I just need Ricky Gervais to just shut up through the whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> that would make it a lot better for me. But, like, yeah. It, yeah. God damn it. Like, I, I honestly thought it was Josh Gad for a minute, though, because I was just annoyed. I was instinctively getting at it. It was like, no, I, no this isn't a Josh Gad. For a second, movie. I thought it was Jermaine Clement, but... Then I was like, I can see that. Mm. Yeah, like, I was thinking in the beginning, like, oh, he sounds like the crab from Moana, but I was like, no, that's someone else. I would have preferred him, honestly. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Seriously, he's a charming motherfucker. He is. He probably could have pulled that off, but instead, mm -hmm. yeah, like, who's the smuggest douchebag that currently isn't doing anything? I think he also, like, produced it or something? I don't remember. Like, he had some other credit in it. Uh, maybe, I mean, maybe that's how he got the role. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's one of those obnoxious fourth wall breaking things that isn't done well, like, in Deadpool, and... Mm -hmm. It's like honestly, and I, I know a lot of people are gonna hate me for this comparison because I know it's a very popular show, but it kind of reminded me of Fleabag. Um, Never heard of it. Uh, it's an Amazon Prime show, but that also relies on a lot of fourth wall breaks. The main character, mm. uh, and I had trouble getting through the first episode uh, because I I kind of found it really obnoxious. Mm. Um, and I've seen a lot of clips from it. It looks like a really good show, but I just can't get past um, the obnoxiousness of the, of the uh, fourth mm -hmm. wall breaks because uh, it's it's too frequent and just t describes what's happening. I was like, these aren't jokes. <laughs> You're just <laughs> telling me what I'm seeing right now. 
Um, well, I'm gonna get like a sh- shit ton of angry comments. Oh, <laughs> like, no. bad Fuck yeah, you, flea bags and American treasure. I don't know. We it's all send Jerry Asher and his pain in her both. I don't know what you're doing there either. We are the fans of Fleabag. I don't know, I'm just making shit up. <laughs> Here to unite against Michael the comic nerd. It's British comedy. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are the people of Fleabag. We're British now to better pr- reflect the... the <laughs> You can stop now anytime. I'm, I'm very tired. Anytime you're ready, you can stop. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. I'm, I'm in that special state of tired where I'm loopy. I get it. It's yeah. Friday. It's mm-hmm. been a long week. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Anywho, so mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't really know. This is one of those movies that has a very manic energy. It's either going to work for you and it's not, or it's not. Yeah, uh, I think probably the best case because i think it's one of those cases like i'm not a huge fan of manic energy animated films i like anime films that take their time more mm-hmm. uh, that being said it's not a knock against the quality of the film itself uh, yeah. i think it's a very important note to make even though it might not match my personal preferences it's still a well-made movie um a very unique kind of like yoshi's yarn world like aesthetic yeah. Kind of got a little bit of it's that going on. Sort of stop motion, but not really. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, again, mixed with high the chance of meatballs. Again, it's the closest comparison I can think of. Also have Terry Crews. Mm. Uh, um, oh, shit. No, that was Mr. T. No, it was Terry Crews, wasn't it? Uh, the, the police officer? That was Mr. T. I think he played in the sequel. I think he played the cop in the sequel. Oh, did he? I never saw the sequel. Uh, see, I it was Mr. T in the first one. I know that. I'm going to Google this, because this is going to bug me. Yep. All right, everyone sit tight. We're going to sit in stone silence while Michael Googles this. Because I'm kind of thinking, like, oh, God, I hope I, I didn't just, was just really racist back then. That's the sentiment. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I was right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so he does it in two? He plays in the sequel, yeah. Yeah, okay, mm-hmm. Mr. T does him in the first one. Okay, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Ooh, scared me. Uh, uh, but... <laughs> Or at least I uh, hope so. The other one I saw, I never saw the first one. That mm. <laughs> I remember not liking it when the first time I saw it. Although now I look back, I'm I think I might have been a little harsh on it, um, because that was my that was early twenties me. Earliest twenty me was a lot more cynical. Um, I was just double checking to make sure I was right about Mister T. <laughs> no, I believe you because I think I I believe you. I believe you. Yeah, I googled it. I double checked. It's good. All right. It's yeah. good. Neither it's of us. Technically, neither right. of us did a racist. It's okay. Yay. Yay. I'm sure I will later, just by the nature of being white. Oh, God. <laughs> don't, don't break. Oof. But I will Ugh. acknowledge it and own it like a good person. Oh, God. <laughs> just, there are so many gray areas I don't want to step in right now. <laughs> <laughs> I am acknowledging that it facts. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oddly enough, the only people who can get mad at me about that comment are going to be the white people. <laughs> How dare you say that you're racist just because you're white? You should be white and proud. Dude, I've that, fucking that... gotten those comments. You joke, but oh, I've gotten Oh, God. Those Seriously? Yes. Oh. Like, I can show receipts. I've gotten these fuckers. Oh, God. <laughs> it's like, I want to say please do, but I also want to say please don't. Like, I'm... It's okay. Okay, I'll take your word wrong. for it. Oh, uh, I can't wait to see how they react to my next editorial. <laughs> oh, ooh, 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 yeah. yes. <laughs> Drink, spill the tea. That's me. It's about Superman smashes the clan. I'm sure that would get a very <laughs> reasonable response from people. Well, Superman did smash the clan. Well, that's the like, name of the book. It was like a huge thing. <laughs> like, like, what was it? It was a book, but it was also a radio play. I think, wasn't it? Yep. Yep. Yeah. It start, I, I had to do extensive research on the project. It's my longest video to date. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's close in like 45, 50 minutes. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's so I like we we go all into it. There's a little teaser for the next editorial for you guys. I'm wondering, we go into the history of the radio show, we go into the actual book, we put it in modern day context. Uh, oh, see, hot damn. Which I keep in mind, Superman Smash of the Book is a book that only came out this year. Really? It came out like in January. Oh, shit. <laughs> 
I really got to follow comics more. Like J- January or February. <laughs> Just like, well, this became relevant really fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so look forward to that in a couple weeks whenever uh, poor Ron is done editing it. Mm. <laughs> the poor man. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. Um, so, anywho. So, oh. Yeah. The Willoughby's, it's, um, yeah, I think it's a movie's like, I think when you start watching it, you're going to know very quickly it's going to work for you. Um, it, I think it's definitely a case of personal taste. Um, because, like I said, everything in it looks great. Uh, the, the acting is top-notch. It's solid. Um, the story, for as manic as it is, still works well enough. Um, and it, clearly you didn't notice, notice the, the change as much as I did, so clearly it flowed well enough for you. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, it's got a, it's quirky. Nice. It's a weird quirky or you can get behind or you not. Mm. The one thing we'll both agree on is Ricky Gervais sucks. Yep. <laughs> That's the... Fuck him. <laughs> yeah. Right up the butt. Okay. Um, I don't know what, I don't know. I'm tired. And I'm the one that's going to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Yep. <laughs> Instant regret. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't really think of a lot else to say about this. Um, yeah, I've gotten my stuff out. Yeah, so I think it's one of those ones that if what I, if you like fast-paced, never mm-hmm. slows down kind of animation, you'll like this movie. Yeah. If you're like me and you prefer something a bit slower, then you might get a little tired watching this. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, previews. What previews? Yeah, I don't know. I saw I saw a trailer for a movie that looked incredible. It's about a priest who turns into a velociraptor to fight. Uh, all right, <laughs> we will get we will get get to velociraptor. All right. I just I just love tormenting you with that. Just we all like, watch. We all watch it. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, I have been taking the past couple weeks to myself. That's that's <laughs> totally fair. That is totally fair. Because I have needed some self care, so. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so we got Velocipaster coming up. I know uh, Muha is another movie we want a, a better movie he wants to watch. Uh, we'll do for uh, Mike and Muha's indie bucket, uh, and then I don't even know what's fucking coming out anytime soon. I don't even know oh. anymore. Um, oh. Everything's topsy turvy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is never going to end, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know what's going to happen. They're still going to release movies in China again because they're open. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're going to go, they're going to look at us and go like, look, guys, we wanted to release it here first, but you couldn't get your shit together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we tried. And like, like yeah. they're just like, we tried. You guys are just well, the smart crazy. ones tried. Yeah. The smart people tried. <laughs> Uh, but apparently it's infringing on your rights. Uh, <sighs> that's a whole other topic. We don't need to get that now. Okay. <laughs> These people exhaust me. I'm slowly becoming older. Okay, we I'm... need to. Yeah. Okay, I'm done with the voices. To bed, buddy. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, God. Sorry. That made me sound like I'm taking the back of the barn. Uh, <laughs> like, okay, buddy, lie down, lie down, sleep it off. Sleep it off, buddy. Sleep. Oh, God. <laughs> Tell me about the rabbits, George. <laughs> Jesus. I Tell get me. that reference. Anyway. Tell me about that. Oh, the rabbits. <laughs> Tell me about the rabbits, George. Tell me about the rabbits, George. I should read that book again. That's a good book. It is a good uh, book. But, anywho, I think it's all we really got to say. Now we're just kind of rambling and stalling. Yeah. So thank you all guys right. for watching. We'll see you next time with the Velocipaster. Yes. Bye. Yes. Toodles. <laughs>